Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. By the time you're hearing this video, I'm gonna be on the road. So before I left, I wanted to give a couple of updates and stories across various platforms, a bit of a parkour of different topics. But I wanna start with an update from a recent story. This is something we covered a few days ago. So to make a long story short, Skullgirls is a game that is heavily featured franchise to promote their fighting game. And they recently came out with an update saying that they're gonna be removing a great deal of exploitative content from all of their games, which mostly had to do with fan service. And of course, people were upset. Like I said, this game has incorporated and used fan service to promote their game for basically a decade now. So this is a very strange 180. Well, the update to this is that the review bombs have continued. People have been very, very upset and the core fan base of this franchise is not having it. So on Steam, the Recent reviews have now reached nearly 3,000 overwhelmingly negative reviews. It is not a good situation, and the Skullgirls developers are really biting the bullet on this one. It is a bad look. And it's also had some very unintended consequences as well. So here you have a post made on the 28th saying, Still waiting for Mari to tell us what she thought of the Grimace Shake, using the whole Grimace Shake meme. And of course, you go to the replies, it's a bloodbath. When you censor anything but gore, why is she looking like a player base after this new patch? Death and gore good, panties bad. Literally 90s soccer moms. Maybe ask her what she thinks of your needless censorship of the game. Could you please censor this? It's a bit gory for today's audience. Yeah, as you can see, this is backfiring and the Skullgirls fans and just casual onlookers are mocking them for their very tone-deaf decision and honestly, very well deserved. But moving on to a completely different topic, something we also hinted on before, uh, the whole kick versus twitch war has continued and one of the faces of this debate has been Pokimane. Now, she recently had a clip go onto YouTube and uh, Twitter as well, where she's basically saying she will not sell out her morals to be on kick. So she quote retweeted one of those clips saying, me, it'd be cringe for me to compromise my morals and ethics for money. Random MFs online, you're insecure, jealous, salty. Okay, y'all want something to be mad about, so, so bad, LMAO. So the irony of Pokimane talking about ethics and morals is hilarious on multiple levels. Number one with Kick versus Twitch, one of her main complaints about selling out morals has to do with the fact that Kick has gambling. Well, I got news for Pokimane. Gambling was a big fixture of Twitch when she joined Twitch many years ago. They had a very active gambling section. There's literally no difference between that time on Twitch and Kick right now. The only difference is that Twitch finally banned gambling only about a year ago. So she was basically in the same situation all those years back when she joined Twitch. It's also ironic because Pokimane is a very toxic person. I mean, this conversation and the following reply she's going to make prove that, yeah, she's pretty toxic. But in general, one of the things she's most known for is sending out false copyright strike takedowns on people criticizing her. She has openly admitted and bragged about doing this. So hearing about ethics from her is pretty crazy. And also on a final note, talking about toxic behavior, especially since she wants to point out the bigotry on Kick, for example. Uh, Jarvis, please search Pokimane N-Word compilation. Yeah, there's plenty of that stuff too, so I don't know where she's getting this high horse position from. But some people would come out and respond to that by saying Pokimane is a bully. Where of course, in bully fashion and insecure fashion, Pokimane would quote retweet this person saying, On the real though, this type of pick-me behavior makes me sad because she doesn't realize that the same haters she's farming for easy engagement will someday quickly and easily turn against her too if it's convenient for them. So yes, uh, criticizing Pokimane, if you're a woman, you're now a pick-me. And that would be pointed out by that same user saying, men criticizing you equals misogyny. Women criticizing you equals pick-me. Delusional. And of course, what do you think a bully does in this situation? keeps responding, saying, you jokingly called me a bully and claimed the misogyny I speak out against doesn't exist. How is that criticism? You clearly just pandering to incels and people that hate me, and I hope you realize someday 
that they are not a good target audience. So yes, this is the woman preaching about, you know, treating people nicer and toxicity and ethics and morals, putting it on full display that she is in fact a bully and this is how she's always acting. Everything comes back to hypocrisy. The same behavior she does, she'll condemn others for and so on and so forth. And that's her contribution to this whole kick versus Twitch war. But moving on to another platform, we have a situation going on with YouTube and Sniper Wolf. So they've been promoting her a lot recently and a lot of people have kind of raised their eyebrows at this choice of a person to promote and use as a face of their platform. Many users like this pointing out the obvious when they have little promotional posts here saying, uh, is this the kind of person you want to promote? Because Sniper Wolf is largely known for reaction content. She just reacts to a TikTok compilation or something like that. That is the core of her content, not if not the vast majority of her content. And, you know, speaking personally, I don't have an issue with reaction content. I have plenty of reaction content myself. In fact, this video is a reaction to all these stories, you know, if you want to expand the definition. But it gets a little different, it gets a little murkier when you have a person who just simply reacts to other people's content in the form of compilations and things like that. It, it's a little different when you start getting on your moral high horse and start acting like you're better than everyone and you deserve more. I mean, it's, it's not the most original content, we all know this. But of course, in insecure fashion, she quote retweeted that past tweet saying, I'm gonna have to start charging you 20% since you get your ideas from me. Very strange comment. And other people jumped in to say that Sniper Wolf used steal ideas. And then she replied with, 90% of what I upload are my ideas. People copy me and then people like you get confused, showing a uh, comparison between her video and someone reacting to something very similar. Where of course, Jack comes back and says, in quotes, I invented reacting to other people's TikToks. Anyone else is copying me. And he says, incredible mental gymnastics. Hey YouTube and VidCon, are you sure you're okay boosting her? Are you absolutely sure? And of course, you know what's gonna happen next. She's gonna quote retweet that saying, wah, I can't stand that a female YouTuber is getting more views than me, even though I make the same content. Grr, life is hard. Unfortunately for Sniper Wolf, I have to inform you, nobody is hating you because you're a female. They're hating on you because you're a reaction channel who is thumbing your nose at everyone else, acting like you're superior to them, and also acting like you're superior because you get more views. This has nothing to do with the fact that you're a female, but it does show that you're, you're incredibly insecure, and it's reflected in this tweet as well. She quote retweeted this original one, saying, I love you even though you did me dirty with this frame, basically saying that this is a bad picture of her. So she doesn't even just point that out. She even goes as far as uploading better pictures of herself because she didn't like how she looked in this picture. Yeah, if it wasn't obvious, she's very insecure. It is now. But moving on to another story, kind of related to uh, the whole concept of stealing content, huh? So it's amazing that reaction channels can get away with these things, and yet scammers can exploit that same system, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the YouTube copyright system is completely busted, we all know that, but this story really highlights it. So apparently a scammer made $23 million by filing false copyright claims on other people's content. He's been sentenced to six years, but this whole thing is insane. It highlights how vulnerable the system is. Anyone can copyright claim anything, and most people can't fight it. I can't tell you how many fraudulent claims I've had against my channel, especially from foreign companies or made up companies. It's a real problem, and this just goes to show you that it's a big issue, and it's one that we're gonna have to somehow figure out a solution to, because I, I see problems like the whole, um, the whole Miranda Sings video we reacted to the other day. I mean, is she gonna be able to start copyright claiming people because she made a YouTube, YouTube apology in the form of a song? Is she gonna exploit that? Who knows, she probably could with the way this platform exists. But uh, moving on to a different set of news. So in case you guys didn't see, another round of Niji Sanji graduations. This time, four Indonesian VTubers are graduating. And at this point, that is the majority of Indonesian Niji Sanji VTubers who have graduated. Now over half have graduated. Not only was that branch 
absorbed into the main branch, most of the Indonesian VTubers are now gone. A lot of people are very upset about this, and here's the original post if you want. It's in Indonesian, of course, but a lot of people are very upset about this, and it seems like almost every other day there is a new graduation coming out involving Niji Sanji talents, and if you're an Indonesian fan, you got to feel pretty betrayed and pretty sad about this, and there's not a whole else lot to say about that, but I want to end on one kind of funny story here. So apparently Twitter is reportedly working on a download video button. Now that may surprise people, but yeah, there's no way to download videos on Twitter without some sort of an extension. So this is a pretty big deal, but here's the thing. A lot of people are excited, but I know what's going to happen. I guarantee they're going to paywall this. They're going to put it behind a Twitter blue subscription and make you pay for it. But hey, uh, finally, after almost two decades, we're getting a very simple feature that for some reason was never included. But that's going to do it for this parkour type video. We covered a lot of subjects, so please share your thoughts on those various topics in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time.